three parts today. So the first part is I'll talk about Mary Bowser, who was a slave and a spy. Then I'll show you a demonstration of how, as a writer of historical fiction, I've woven the history into the fiction. And then I'll have a moment of reflecting on what it means to make up the past in the way that writers of historical fiction do. So we'll start with the first one, Mary Bowser, slave to spy. Now, personally, when people would talk about the Civil War, I was a little bored. It seemed to me like there were many battles that you had to memorize, many generals that you had to memorize, many dates that you had to memorize, many numbers of people killed and wounded at different that you had to memorize, and it all seemed incredibly boring to me because it was facts without a story or a human component that really grabbed me. And then one day, I happened upon a book called, um, sorry, the book title is not showing up, A Shining Thread of Hope, which is a thick book about the history of black women in America. And in the 300 pages of this book, there are about three paragraphs that tell the story of Mary Bowser. Has anybody, aside from people who know me and have heard me talk about this book, heard of Mary Bowser before? And so, oh, <laughs> excellent. Mary Bowser um, was born a slave in Virginia. She was owned by the Van Loo family, who were wealthy for Richmonders. They had a daughter, Bet, short for Elizabeth, who was outspoken. We know what that is code word in a young Southern Belle, you can imagine. So she gets crazy notions into her head, and she frees Mary and sends her north to be educated. Mary comes back to the South, and during the Civil War, pretends to be a slave in the Confederate White House so that she can spy on the president of the Confederacy on behalf of the Union. Right. Whoa, who doesn't want to know more about that story? And I loved the idea that she was taking the stereotype that black people were incapable of intelligence, and she was playing on that stereotype to become an intelligence agent. Like it was um, thrilling and brilliant and kind of gives me shivers just to think about it. But as much as what she did was amazing, what really was interesting to me was this question of why she did it. So imagine a cause that you care about, right? Global warming, world hunger, there's something that each of us feels really passionate about. Now imagine if somebody said, well, you might be able to really do something that would significantly help that cause if you give up your family, your friends, your community, everything that you own, you go someplace where you are completely endangered, and we don't know how long that'll be for, and we don't really know what the outcome will be, but it might really help. <laughs> and we see it in hands in the air. <laughs> I mean, just that significance of we know how history ends, but we have to remember that for the historical players, they don't. Nobody, somebody said earlier, well, the Civil War wasn't fought for slavery. The Civil War ended slavery. And slavery was one of the points of contention, but nobody knew when the war started that slavery was going to be ultimately either continued or ended based on the outcome of the war. So this was a question for me. What would make somebody give up their freedom and risk their life for something they didn't know was going to have the outcome that they hoped for? What would it be like to have this experience, and what could this story tell us that we still needed to know today? So that's how I came to the excitement about wanting to know more about Mary Bowser. Here's what I can tell you for sure. Oh, forgot to go forward, so this is Mary Bowser. Um, this is a slide of St. John's Church, which is on Church Hill in Richmond, Virginia, a very fancy old part of Richmond. I can tell you the date that Mary Bowser was baptized in this church and the date that she was married. I can extrapolate from that fact, those facts, that, and that's because we have the church records, that she had a very unusual life because this was a church for wealthy white Richmonders. She's not the only black person to ever be baptized or married in that church, but it's pretty damn rare. And the fact that she was, must have been baptized probably not as a baby, but certainly as a child, and the fact that the Van Loo family, while she was still their slave, chose to baptize her there, it's also an interesting indication that they were treating her differently than other slaves were treated. Um, across the street in Richmond at that time, was the Van Loo Mansion. So we can assume that if she was a slave to the Van Loo family, she spent time in this house. This house isn't there anymore because at some point, the city of Richmond needed to build a new school and guess whose house in the fancy neighborhood they decided to tear down? The woman who had been a spy for the Union. Um, and really, there are rumors about when 
Mary Bowser was born. Uh, there are people who say that she was educated in Philadelphia. Uh, there's, she's always attributed, it's always attributed to her that she had a photographic memory. There's no, nothing in the historical record that tells us for sure those things are true. So most of what we know about her is mythology is word of mouth, is not something that we can definitely prove. Now, um, and even this photo which circulates of her, it always says it's believed to be of Mary Bowser, and I've been working very hard. I yesterday had an exchange with um, Kim Lesky, who NPR would recognize, the listeners will recognize as the librarian for NPR, because they're the first people who put this photograph up on the internet saying that it's her, and I said, what's your source? And she said, I don't know, you should try calling these other people, so I've been trying to track it down. Um, it's bad news for a biographer when you can't tell anything about your subject. It's fantastic news for a novelist. <laughs> so I'm very excited now that I have Mary Bowser in my heart to go 